Hello? Oh, yes, I did. Thanks for calling back. I'll tell you why I phoned. I just received a letter, and I want to read it to you. Are you listening? It says, Dear Radio Friend, that's me, we have received so many wonderful letters requesting us to repeat our Easter show that we are going to do it. Wishing you a happy Easter, your good friends, the Nelson family. Ozzie and Harriet, David and Ricky. How do you like my new Easter outfit? Oh, Harriet, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Do I look nice enough to make a pretty speech? You look nice enough for anything. America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents the amusingly transcribed adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. year, another Easter, with its joyful reaffirmation of man's hope, its traditions, observances, and customs. Like many other families, the Nelsons of 1847 Rogers Road have a few traditional Easter customs of their own. For instance, some years ago, on the night before Easter, Harriet remarked, You know, Easter sunrise services must be beautiful. I'd love to go sometime. Thus, a great tradition was established in the Nelson household. In fact, last night wouldn't have seemed like the night before Easter if Harriet hadn't remarked, You know, Easter sunrise services must be beautiful. I'd love to go sometime. Why don't we go tomorrow, Mom? We can get up. Sure, we can get up. Well, I know you boys can get up. Well, the only reasons we haven't made it in the past is because we haven't gone to bed early the night before. Nothing difficult about getting up early if you get plenty of sleep. Can we go tomorrow, Mom? Well, all right, we'll try it again. But I wonder if... Well, Ricky's had the sniffles all day, and you know how cold it is at that time of morning, sitting outdoors on those benches. I'll put on two pairs of socks. <laughs> I think it'd be a better idea if you bring along that heavy lap robe, and you guys could wrap yourselves up in it. Well, that's fine, dear, but where is the lap robe? I haven't seen it since before Christmas. Well, wait a minute now. Didn't Thorny borrow it? It seems to me he did. I'll go over a little later and ask him. We're liable to get hungry out there, too. Maybe I ought to fix something to eat. Yeah, that's a good idea. Some hot coffee and sandwiches. Maybe some deviled eggs or something. Oh, Pop, they won't let you bring those in. They won't let us bring what in? Deviled eggs at a church service. (laughs) Well, I think maybe we can get by with it. You can bring some angel food cake to balance it off. (laughs) Come on, fellas, up to bed. So soon? Well, of course, if you're going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, you've got to get some sleep. Somebody at the door, Mom. We better stay up and see who it is. Hello, Emmy Lou. Hello, David. It's Emmy Lou. Come on in, Emmy. (laughs) I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I want to see what you thought of my new Easter outfit. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, you look beautiful, Emmy Lou. Oh, thank you. Do you really like oh, it? Oh, yes. Turn around let me see the back. I couldn't make up my mind between red accessories and brown. Well, I like either one with beige. The thing that decided me was the brown piping on the blouse. Yes, what kind of material is that? Wool crepe. Do you like this new short bolero? Oh, yes, and I love that jabot on the blouse. Move over here by the light. Uh, do you like the three box pleats in the front of the skirt? Oh, yes, and those extra wide gauntlets are very smart this year. What are they talking about? Uh, It's a secret language, David. It's a game women play called Make the Salary Disappear. (laughs) Oh, yes, you really look just lovely, Emmy Lou. It's a beautiful outfit. Thank you, Mrs. Nelson. What are you folks doing tomorrow? 
Well, the current rumor says we're going to the sunrise services out at Silver Lake Mountain. Are you really? Oh, how wonderful. Mother and I have always wanted to go, but Daddy can't get up that early. Oh, I'm sure he could. It just takes a little willpower. Incidentally, we're looking for a lap robe to sort of keep the boys warm. Do you folks have one? We used to have one, but I haven't seen it in ages. Have you tried Mr. Thornberry? No, uh, not yet, but don't worry about it. We'll find one. Well, I have to run home. Good luck in the morning. Thanks, Emmy. Thanks, Emmy. A happy Easter. Same to you. Oh, will we see you in the Easter parade? You bet. I'll be there with bells on. Gee whiz, they'll wear anything. <laughs> Up to bed. Yeah, come on, boys. Now you heard your mother. Daddy and I'll be up in a few minutes to see how you're doing. How's it going, boys? Fine. Brush your teeth, David? Yes, ma'am. Get to sleep as soon as you can now, fellas. All right, I'm going over to Thorny's and see if he has that lap robe. Okay. Don't stay all night now. Now, don't worry. I won't. Can we listen to the radio for a while, Mom? Oh, no, not tonight. You'll be getting up at 4 o'clock. Do you realize how early that is? Mom? Yes, David? I'm kind of worried about Pop. Do you think he'll make it tomorrow morning? Oh, of course he will. Now, don't you worry about Daddy. He's awful hard to get up, Mom. Look, if you promise not to tell, I'll let you in on something. When Daddy's in bed tonight, I'm going to set the clock ahead an hour. So we'll really have two hours to get there. Mom? Yes? Are you smarter than Pop? Well, of course not. This is just a little joke, so he'll be sure and get up. Pop's really smart, isn't he? Well, certainly he is. Why all this concern? He told me I was going to grow up and be just like him. Gosh, Oz, I'm awful sorry, but I can't seem to find the lap robe anywhere. Oh, that's okay, Thorny. Don't worry about it. Harriet says she has some army blankets. Well, be sure they're heavy ones. It gets awful cold that early. Oh, I know. You just think you do. Wait and see. What do you mean, wait and see? You talk as if I've never gotten up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Have you? Well, of course I have. Lots of time. Oh, Oz. No, well, it's a fact, Thorny. I don't mind getting up early after I'm on my feet. The reason we've missed the sunrise service before is... Well, confidentially, Harriet has a little difficulty waking up in the morning. <laughs> you know how women are. <laughs> You're telling me. My wife comes in in the morning and shakes me, calls me to breakfast. She can hardly keep her eyes open. <laughs> See, this whole thing was their idea, but I'll probably have to drag the whole family out of bed in the morning. Say, I have an idea. Why don't you give yourself a little extra time? Play it safe. Uh, just how do you mean? Well, playing a little trick on Harriet. Wait till she's asleep, and then you get up and set the clock ahead an hour. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. You know, Thorny, it'll serve her right, too. That's exactly the kind of a stunt she's always pulling on me. <laughs> well, it works both ways, too. Tomorrow morning, by the time you remember what you've done, you'll probably be half-dressed and you won't dare climb back into bed. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry about me, Thorny. Incidentally, why don't you and Catherine come along with us? No, no, we, we'll just go to the regular Easter service. Ah, oh, but there's something about getting up at that time of the morning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll just go to the regular service. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Oz, if you should happen to get up in the morning, and if it should happen that you actually do go, don't slam the garage door. <laughs> Ozzie. Yeah? I was just going to ask if you were asleep. Funny, I was just going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> well, good night. Got to get some sleep. Yeah, got to get some sleep. You know, if you count sheep, you'll fall asleep faster. Does that really work? Oh, sure. Why don't you try it? <laughs> One sheep, two sheep, three sheep, a shepherd and a shaggy dog. Four sheep. Oh, dear. Hmm? What's the matter? I forgot something. Just go to sleep, dear. I'll only be a minute. 
Harriet, what are you doing? Winding the clock. Go to sleep, dear. I thought you wound it before. Well, I just wanted to make sure. Oh, golly, that reminds me. What's the matter? Uh, I forgot something. I just wound the clock. Yes, I know. I uh, uh, just making sure the the alarm is set. I set it. Just uh, checking up, sort of making sure of everything. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten o'clock. Yeah. One more hour, it'll be twelve. One more hour, it'll be twelve. Uh, that is, I, I meant to say, in one more hour, it'll be eleven. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Good night. Good night. Harriet. Yes? When we leave in the morning, remind me to slam the garage door a little. <laughs> The excitement of Easter is really buzzing around the Nelson household. Ozzie and Harriet planning to get up early. Emmy Lou all dressed up in a new Easter outfit. You know, folks have been putting on their prettiest clothes for Easter for a good many years now. And it's still the thing to do. Just the way it's still the thing for you and your best beau to go walking down the avenue after church, looking in all the store windows along the way. One of the things that will surely catch your eye is the beautiful, gleaming display of 1847 Rogers Brothers in the silverware store. Now, as over a century ago, young couples fall in love at first sight with that lovely silver plate created by famous 1847. Now, as then, they make it their choice for their homes, and the reason is simple enough. It's because there's no other silver plate you can buy that's so beautiful, that's created with such imagination and exquisite craftsmanship. 1847 Rogers Brothers truly is the finest silver plate in America. And amazingly enough, 1847 has not gone up in price since 1945. See it tomorrow. And remember, it's still the thing, as it was over a century ago, to choose the one and only... 1847 Rogers Brothers. It's the night before Easter, and all through the house, not a creature is stirring, not even a mouse. The clock on the dresser has been set with care in hope that morning will soon be there. It's getting later all the time, and I think Ozzie and Harriet are still awake. I can't seem to get to sleep. Ozzy. Hmm? The bedroom door just opened. There's somebody in the room. Don't be frightened, dear. Who's there? <laughs> Me, Pop. No, no. Oh, David, what do you want? Is it time to get up yet? <laughs> no, it isn't time yet, David. Now go on back to bed. Isn't it almost time, Pop? Ricky, where'd you come from? We're together. <laughs> now, boys, you know better than to come sneaking in like that, frightening your mother. Scaring your father. <laughs> now go back to bed, boys. We'll call you when it's time to get up. You woke Mother and Daddy up in the middle of the night. Come on, Ricky. Okay, good night, Mom. Good night, Ricky. Good night, Pop. Good night, Ricky. Good night, Mom. Good night, David. Good night, Pop. Good night, David. Good night, Mom. <laughs> Will you boys please go back to bed? <laughs> Howling around this time of the night. Oh, let's go to sleep.
Harry, there's somebody at the door. Make a fine time to go to sleep. Where's my bathrobe? It's on the chair by the door. Thank you very much, Emmy Lou. You're very thoughtful. You are going in the morning, aren't you? Oh, of course we're going. Daddy will be glad to hear that. What's he got to do with it? Well, Mr. Thornberry betting all the men in the neighborhood a dollar that you won't get to the sunrise service. So Daddy bet on you. Your father is a good man, Emmy Lou. <laughs> he made Mr. Thornberry give him odds. Well, good night, Mr. Nelson. Remember, we're rooting for you. <laughs> Are you asleep, Harriet? You want me to go in your room and see, Pop? <laughs> Ricky, what are you doing in my bed? I'm not in your bed. You're in my bed. <laughs> well, I gotta get some sleep. Huh? Might as well stay right here. I like to sleep with you, Pop. Oh, that's nice. Go to sleep now, son. Good night, Pop. Good night, son. You in bed? Well, of course I was in bed. And I think it's a pretty cheap trick coming over here to wake me up so I can't get up for the sunrise service so you can collect the bets you've been making all over the neighborhood. Furthermore, it's the most unsportsmanlike conduct I've ever heard of in my life. Now, what do you want? Oz, I came over to bring you the lap robe. The lap robe? Yes. After I'd gone to bed, I remembered where I put it. So I got up, got dressed... And brought it over to you. So little Ricky would be warm in the morning. Oh, thanks, Marnie. Now I'll go all the way back home, go upstairs, and get undressed again, and go back to bed. Oh, that's nice of you, Thorny. I, 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 that is, I... Good night, Oz. Enjoy the sunrise service. <laughs> I guess I got in the wrong room. Oh, well, this is the right room. <laughs> Go to sleep, Harry. Telephone. Put the pillow over your head, Harriet. You won't hear it. Now, who could be calling at this hour? We don't have to answer it, you know. There's no law compelling a person to answer a telephone. Well, you may as well. They'll just keep on ringing. All right. 
right, I'll answer it, but I won't be civil. Hello. Hello. Have you got Mexicali Rose? <laughs> I'm afraid you have the wrong number. Oh, uh, is this the Smiling Dan, the all-night music man? No, 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 it is. You have the wrong number. And you can't play Mexicali Rose? No, definitely not. Well, how about the Classy Lord of the Boom? <laughs> Will you please hang up and go to bed? Uh, why are you so mean to me, Dad? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Calm down and get to sleep, Ozzy. Those things happen. Mexicali Rose. Oh, relax, dear. You have to get some sleep. Now forget it. Good night. Fresh air did the trick. How much farther, Mom? Oh, we're almost there now. When is the sun coming up? Pretty soon, David. Just where did you see it, boys? It's a beautiful sight. It's awful dark out. You think we'll see any bears? And look, there's a bonfire. Oh, yeah, so I see. I guess that's where we park. There's a man by the fire. I guess he has it to keep away the bears. <laughs> Hello there. Is this where we park for the sunrise services? Oh, Oh, yes, it is. Just park anywhere you like. Where is everybody? Oh, you're the first ones here. How about you? Well, I've been here all night. I'm in charge of the ushers. Expect they'll be along in an hour or two. <laughs> an hour or two? Yes, you folks are about two hours early. Two hours early? How did this happen? Well, Ozzy, I have a confession to make. I was a little worried about your getting up on time, so... I set the clock ahead an hour. Oh, Harriet, I'm surprised at you. <laughs> All the mean tricks. How could you do a thing? <laughs> Harriet. Yes? I... I know you meant well, so I forgive you. Oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> but that only accounts for one hour. What happened to the... Uh... Oh, so that's it. Well, I forgive you, too, dear. Now, what do you think we ought to do? Well, as long as we're all wide awake, we might as well stay right here. Mom? Yes? Can we get out of the car? Well, it's a bit chilly, David. I think you better just sit here with Daddy and me. My, this morning air is refreshing, isn't it? Mmm, yeah. Sure is. Ozzy, you aren't going to sleep, are you? No. should say not. Fully awake. What about you? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Pop? Pop? What 
What is it, dear? Daddy's asleep. How does the sun come up? Oh, Rick, he doesn't really come up. Then how does it get daylight? The sun is standing still, and the world is turning around. And when it turns to our side, then it's daylight. Oh, you're just saying that. I am not. Mother? Mother? Mom's asleep. <laughs> how can the world be turning around? We'd get dizzy, wouldn't we, David? David? <laughs> Hey, I better get to sleep before some bears come around and scare me. Hey! Hey in there! Hey, wake up! Wake up! Uh, 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 oh, oh, Harriet, Harriet. Yes, dear. Ooh, my neck. Come on, it's time for the services. Time for the services? The services were over long ago. <laughs> It's after 8 o'clock. It's time to go home. Oh, no. We missed the services? Yeah. First one's here. Last one's to go. <laughs> oh, dear. An Easter Sunday of all time. Uh, Harriet, if we rush right home, there's still time to get ready for church. That's right. Let's get started. Make sure that door is closed. That was fun, wasn't it, David? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ma. Ricky, don't interrupt Mom when she's driving. What is it, Ricky? Can me and David go sometime again? Ricky, David and I. Okay, Mom, but if you and David go, can I go with you, Mom? <laughs> Mom? I guess so, but don't shout so loud. You'll wake Daddy. <laughs> back in just a moment. Well, there's one thing you can say. The Nelsons tried hard, and they almost made it. I'd better not say anything at all, Mr. Smith, because I intended to make that sunrise service, too, and missed it myself. But I blame it all on 1847 Rogers Brothers. 1847 Rogers Brothers? Mm Mm-hmm. Last night, my husband brought me home a service for eight of 1847 as an Easter present. And I was so excited that I didn't even think about winding the clock and setting the alarm. Well, gosh, it's a wonder to me you even went to bed at all. Just think, you could have stayed up all night admiring your 1847 pattern. Every one of them so unusual. Adoration, eternally yours, first love, remembrance. They're designed to suit every woman's individual taste and decorating preferences. The pattern ornaments are more highly raised, more deeply carved, exquisite in every detail. And look at those beautiful gem-like open-work knife handles. And the extra luster and weight of each piece, too. (laughs) Well, honestly, Mr. Smith, I've never seen silver plate that has such richness in every way. It's really more like solid silver, and you can hardly blame a woman for getting excited when she sees a set of 1847 on her own table. Oh, not a bit. Because it means she owns the best, the finest silver plate in America. The one and only 1847 Rogers Brothers. There sure were a lot of people at church this morning, huh? Oh, yes, quite a few, David. Papa's sure quiet. He didn't say anything. Wait a minute. Where is your father? He was walking with us. There he goes down the street. He didn't turn in our house. (laughs) Oh, you better go bring him back, boys. I think Daddy's walking in his sleep. Starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Yes, Harriet, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Appearing in our cast tonight were Ozzie Nelson, Harriet Nelson, David Nelson, Ricky Nelson, Barbara Nelson, John Brown, (laughs) Janet Waldo, Joe Kearns, and yours truly, Vern Smith. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. Say, folks... You got a pencil handy? Write down the date. April 24th. Next Sunday. What's going to happen then? Oh, that's the surprise. But I'll give you a hint. On the QT, it's QL. 
And believe me, folks, I've seen it, and it's truly beautiful. Happy Easter. Happy Happy Easter. Easter. 